As Fox McCloud of the titular Star Fox Fighter Squadron, you choose one of three difficulties that take you through a variety of zones that range from the surfaces of planets to warship littered asteroid fields on your way to locating and defeating the Warlord 8, Andros. Difficulty is built into the level design, so if combat has you exploding too often for your liking, you're best off choosing one of the easier routes. I always choose the easiest, since that's as much stress as I'm willing to put myself through, given the circumstances. There are other reasons why the higher difficulties don't work very well on the Super Nintendo, but they're technical. First of all the core hardware wasn't powerful enough to render any of the Polygon Star Fox boasts, and required the Super FX chip in order to maintain its less than stellar 15 frames per second. Usually less, especially when the screen would get crowded in the higher difficulty routes, as previously mentioned. This does not bode well for a game that is in practice reflex-based. That may be why Nintendo opted to give the R-Wing, your fighter, the ability to deflect incoming fire with just the double tap of a shoulder button, causing it to perform an aileron roll, not a barrel roll. Nitpicks aside, the invincibility roll is a concession for the fact that the hardware can't reliably present the information you need to evade obstacles like enemies and enemy fire, at peak polygon volume. Nintendo knew its console well and executed effectively on its strong points. The score for Star Fox has it all. Exciting orchestral build-ups, blood pumping combat themes, futuristic synth sounds and even rock-styled mission complete ditties. The opening theme for Corneria will get your feet or fingers moving without fail, and the soundtrack scales in dramatics and scope as you near the end goal and final target. I was certainly less concerned with the technical execution of the game than its epic theme and engaging universe. The SNES was built with accelerators in mind, and that improved its viability and lifespan. Would Star Fox have done better with a faster math coprocessor? Certainly, in Star Fox 2 we've gotten to see what it could have done for the game, but Nintendo surmounted the weaknesses of Star Fox and capitalized on the market saturation of the SNES to maximize exposure of its landmark property. That was, in part, why the game garnered such praise. Here was a gift from Nintendo, one we were eager to accept for our veteran, well-loved 16-bit console. Star Fox was an experience that captured the hearts, minds and fingers of the largest installed base of users Nintendo has ever enjoyed. The Switch is well on its way to changing all that, but you may have noticed something in that previous paragraph. Lack of competition. Star Fox dominated the charts because it executed predominantly on the premise in the minds of its players, even though it failed on technical points that crippled titles that do the same now.